Okay, so now we're going to show you what DriveWorks can do. Miguel, now Miguel is going to, he's not going to be on stage. Miguel is going to be in the back, but I promise you, Miguel is actually in the back controlling this. Miguel, are you back there? I'm here. Can you okay. Good. All, right. <laughs> All right. So let me show you um, a sneak peek of what we're working on for DriveWorks. Um, before we start showing some of the results we're obtaining, let me describe to you what is the current uh, sensor platform that we're using. Um, we're using um, basically a, a standard car that has been equipped with cameras. Uh, we're using six cameras in this case, um, four surround view cameras, uh, front, left, rear, and right. And then uh, we also add um, an additional two cameras, um, which are a narrow field view on the front, a narrow field view on the back. Now, these are um, standard automotive uh, grade cameras. These are their, their one megapixel RGB cameras. And um, in addition to these sensors, we are also adding um, LiDARs. We have four LiDARs uh, um, built um, into, the, into the car. We have a, a two of them are focusing on the front and the rear bumpers, uh, you know, looking forward and backwards for co um, collision detection. And then we have two more on the roof with a certain pitch angle to be able to do reconstruction and getting through these um, height and the structures out of the, um, the space around the car. Um, in addition to these sensors, we also use um, an, a standard GPS, um, standard quality GPS, which provides you um, an accuracy of, of about two to three meters um, on, on, on positioning. And then we also look at the um, car sensors, such as you know, wheel, um, you know, speed of the wheels and turning angle of the, of the front wheels and, and such. Now, um, what I'm going to show you is... Now, Miguel, before you, yeah. go, before you go, so we're using these four LiDARs. Uh, they're quantity LiDARs, right? They're, they're 40,000 samples per, per scan, and we're scanning them 10, 10 times a second. So four, four LiDARs, that represents about 1.6 million samples. We have six cameras, each one megapixel, um, as, as you've already said, and we're, and we're, of course, updating those at 30 frames a second. Now, we chose this configuration of sensors. We chose this configuration of sensors so that we could test out the entire platform for self-driving cars. Now, there's a lot of different configurations you could imagine. You could imagine you know, um, sweeping singular LiDAR systems. Uh, you've, you've, uh, you've probably even heard there, there are different LiDAR systems that could be maybe four different LiDARs that are oriented in different, uh, different uh, angles so that uh, it could uh, remove self-shadowing and, and um, uh, uh, deal with higher resolution images like that. And so there's a lot of different ways you could, you could put multiple cameras in the front, uh, some with uh, long distance cameras, some wide angle. Uh, that you could use stereo cameras. We could make all of those choices. We decided not to just to keep one particular configuration, but our partners are going to want to use configurations of every single permutation I described. And so one of the most important things is to develop a platform by which any car company could decide what is their configuration of choice, all of those sensor information would come into that sense block that I told you guys in the beginning, we would fuse it, and then we would process it from that point forward. Okay, you could train your network um, by the fusion informa fused information of all these different sensors, however you desire. Okay, Miguel, go ahead. Sorry about that. Sure, no problem. Um, so yeah, um, so what I'm going to show you is, um, to be able to show some results here, um, we recorded um, the sensor um, output to disk, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be replaying the sensor, but I'm going to be running all the algorithms live in a computer. Um, so here you can see what, the, um, what the, the data looks like. This is a recording uh, taken in um, um, up in Santa Clara. Uh, this is a one one uh, freeway drive. And, and, you know, now, just remember, for the audience, Miguel's currently not driving. He's actually in the back sitting next yeah. to a workstation. And so the video is streaming into the computer. However, the processing of this video is all being done in real time. Okay, so the processing is all being done in real time. The video has all been pre-recorded, streaming in. Okay, go ahead. That's correct. So, so now you, you can see here the video. Let me show you also the LiDAR um, data. So this is four LiDARs. And what you see here is the accumulation of all the uh, measurements that the LiDARs are taking. We can you know, turn some of them off. So you can see this front LiDAR, the front roof LiDAR, the rear roof LiDAR, and the rear bumper LiDAR. Right, so... Um, and so we, re we recorded all of this in our driving experience down 101. 
right, in, in, uh, in Santa Clara? That is correct, yes. All right, so now the, what I'm going to show you is the different stages of the pipeline of where we take all this information and, and do something uh, useful with it. Um, the first thing we need to do um, in the perception pipeline is try to figure out you know, where the car is so we can relate all the sensors together and we can fuse all the sensor information. So to do that, we, um, the first thing we do is try to estimate car motion. And we do that by uh, running a structure for motion pipeline. And let me pause the images. So basically, what we're doing is with the four fisheye cameras, we are detecting you know, all the features, all the points in those images um, you know, for all the, all the different views. Um, in this case, up to 8,000 per image. And then what we're doing is, as the car, the car is moving, we're trying to correlate you know, which points are which in all the, all the sequences of images so we can do um, a reconstruction. So you're, you're tracking, eight, let's say, 8,000 points. You're tracking 8,000 points per camera. So 36,000 points. And you're tracking these 36,000 points in free space, uh, in, in 3D space, through 30 frames per second. Is that right? That is correct. OK. So with all these points, what we do is we, we run, um, as I said, a structure for motion algorithm that is, is allowing us to uh, place those points in 3D space. So we're converting them from 2D to 3D based on um, you know, how things are. Now remember, the, the, the car only saw camera information. And the camera information is just a m bunch of numbers that is coming in through, a, through four cameras that's surrounding this car. What Miguel and his algorithm has done is through the motion that we're going through space, calculate the 3D environment around it, structure from motion. Okay, That is correct. And additionally, um, by computing that structure from motion, we also are able to detect the motion of the car. And we can determine how the car has been moving um, through, you know, while, while taking those images. So we can see here, this is the path that the car has been taking as, as we've been um, capturing all the video and processing it. Right. Um, so once we have uh, this motion, once we know how the car is moving, then we can bring in the LiDAR information. Um, the LiDAR data is relative to the car, right? It's just distances of you know, any points where the LiDAR beams hit as the car moves through space. So to combine all that together, we need to do, know how the car is moving, which we obtain through the structure for motion. Now, we can put all that together um, then into what is called an occupancy map. Basically, it's a probabilistic map that tells you, for a space around the car, <clears throat> um, which areas of that space are occupied by objects and which areas are not. Miguel said occupancy map in Spanish. <laughs> yes. Go ahead. Go ahead, Miguel. Exactly. So what you see here in the image is um, you know, the, the, white, the, the whiter the points are, the more probable uh, there is an obstacle. The darker the points are, the less probable they are. And as we travel through, we can see you know, these are moving obstacles that, that they are giving us really bright points, and then they fade out as they move away. Um, and we have on top, obviously, structure for motion that gives you some um, in relation to the motion. Okay. So now, now the, our car knows how we're moving through space. And it could, it, could, it could detect that there are objects around us. That is correct. OK. So, exactly. So the next step on, on, the, on the perception pipeline is try to understand what those, objects are, uh, what those objects are. So for that, we do two things. Uh, we are running, um, as I mentioned earlier, we have two, uh, two narrow field view cameras, one in the front, one in the back. We are running DriveNet on those cameras. We are just taking those. Um, those images in and running them through a neural network that has been trained to recognize cars, um, different classes of cars, car SUVs, uh, buses, and, and such. And we are running that um, as, you know, in, in, in parallel with, um, with the rest of the algorithms. Now, um, the second part of the object detection we do is we look at that occupancy map that we were d discussing earlier. We detect the moving objects in the map. And then with those, uh, because the, the, this, uh, um, the grid that we have here is, um, is in world coordinates, we can then establish positions of objects. Let me pause it. It's positions of objects, relative speed to, a, to our car. And because we have the neural network that tells us what those objects are, then we can um, also uh, put a class to them and then understand what those things are as they move uh, by us.
Okay. So um, at this point, we are. So now I, ha I have a model of the world around me now. Correct. Okay. I know. I know that I'm traveling through space, and I have a model of the world around me. Now, what's next? The next. The next step is to figure out where we are um, in a map. Localize ourselves within the lanes that we're driving, so we can actually um, then run a more of algorithms to do path planning and motion planning and, and, and navigation. So the localization is what we're doing here. Uh, we are taking um, a high definition map. This is the um, high definition map from here that has been taken, has been um, you know, computed offline by, uh, by running, by driving with cars with you know, com complex sensors like LiDARs, um, differential GPSs, and, and such. So it's a very accurate map. And then we're taking our uh, GPS signals, which are this, um, marked by these you know, icons here. And we also know how we're moving based on our structure for motion um, algorithms. And then what we're trying to do is place out the car in the right lane, in the, at the right distances as we're traveling, and compensate for the errors of the GPS and the errors of the measurements at the same time. And this is what we're seeing here. I mean, we can see, for example, that the GPS does have an error because it's, it's placing the car on the side, and now it's doing some. Um, and so the point that you're trying to make is that GPS just simply is not good enough. That is correct. Right? GPS is accurate within several meters, but we need accuracy within several centimeters. Exactly, that's correct. Now, in addition to um, just this, uh, the, the localization, we are also running um, a simplified path planner that allows us to figure out uh, you know, the current lane, whether it's, it's viable to be drive, uh, driven in, or whether we need to switch lanes, and how, what sort of trajectory the car should, uh, should follow to do that. As we can see here, um, the path planner is just, trying, is just giving us the current lane in green, because that is drivable, and then al alternate lane changes. Now, as, we, as obstacles, as other cars are driving by us, we can see that. Um, we're trying to estimate that path, and we see that there's an obstacle, so there's a bunch of paths that are not valid until we find the one that is valid without, that will allow us to change lanes without colliding. That's really terrific. OK. So, and then yeah, putting everything together here, this is the, um, the additional, the LiDAR, the 3D reconstruction of the world uh, with the LiDAR data. And, and so, they, Miguel, what we have here is that we've taken all of the sensors that we have, we fused them, and we figured out where we are in space, how we're traveling through space. We registered that with a map, a high, de a high definition map. And as a result of that, we know what's the world around ourselves. We know where we are. And from that information, we can plan a path that is comfortable, that is safe, that takes into consideration the kinematics of the car. Lots of computation that needs to be done on the path planning side, and as a result, uh, your car is driving nicely down the highway. Nice okay, car. thank you very much, Miguel. Good job. Thank you.